Inside the fort, the little farmer was in a state of great distress. He is second to none in the realms of heroism. But because he was not used to doing anything after hearing Tamayaner's idea, he suffered like a bird without a wing in this critical situation. From that morning, one after the other, he was hearing terrible news. A message was received that Pariya Palyavatareya left the house of Sambuvareya of Kadampur for Tanjavur and stayed for more than two days. He also knew that on the day of the storm, many boats crossing the Kalata River were drowned. After a while a man from the boat of the great Pavatare arrived. He said that the boat he had come in had also capsized and that he had stumbled ashore and reached the shore. Another person came and said that Prince Arulmas Hivarmar had come out of hiding in Nagipatanam Sudamani Viharam and was coming towards Tanjavur with a large crowd. He said that he stayed at Tiravarar for the night and that he had travelled by night and crossed all the flood-prone areas. After a while, a man sent by Sambuvarir arrived. He said that the Thiruko Valar Malayaman seems to be gathering a large force and that Aditha Karakalar's frenzy is increasing. So Sambuvarayar sent a message to Pariyapalyavatarayar to leave immediately. No great destroyer has yet arrived in Tanjore. How can he leave immediately? Maybe the flood will take away that brave old man whom even Yama is afraid to come near? The small gardener was disturbed. After this spies came running from the south to report the greatest thunder of all. They said that the Sina soldiers were coming in droves on the three main roads leading to Tanjore from the south and Kajumbalar Buddhavikrama Kesari. As soon as he heard this, Chinapula Vetare ordered all the gates of the fort to be closed. He has strictly forbidden anyone to leave from inside and anyone to enter from outside. As usual, he came into the fort and placed the vassals on guard around the emperor's palace and appointed his own soldiers to guard the fort. He thought that all these details should be conveyed to the emperor. Before that, the prime minister wanted Anuradhar to attend. Although he did not have much faith in Anuradha, it was better for him to be inside the fort than outside. Is he not able to do anything without knowing himself? It is also good to ask him for ideas and pretend to do things. If something goes wrong later, no one can blame it on themselves. It would be easier to take Anuradha along and tell the emperor than to tell the emperor in person. Prince Arulmas Hivarman and Buddhavikrama Kesari, who wanted to marry him by giving him a wife, conspired together and believed that they were coming from both sides to capture Tanjavur. Even the emperor would find it hard to believe if he told him personally about this. Shouldn't it be believed if Prime Minister Anuradhar also says it? Prime Minister Anuradhar was also somewhat disturbed. He didn't like the fact that the younger Brady Kundave had left Tanjavur that morning. The disappearance of the Queen of Elam and Punguzali in the morning had somewhat disturbed his inner peace. Where would they have gone? How would they have gone? Why? No matter how much I thought about it, I could not come to a conclusion. The news that Buddhavikrama is coming with Kesari Sanyam has caused a stir for him. But he suggested to Chinapula Vetareya that there was no need to report all this to the emperor immediately. I hear that the emperor's mental confusion has increased today. The queen's private chamber came and informed her. If Buddha talks about Vikramaksari in this situation, the blood vessel in the emperor's brain will burst and even his life may be in danger. Already, there is a rumor that the emperor has died in the city of Tanjore. How tragic it would be if it really happened! Think about it. Rumors will spread that you have killed the emperor yourself. Your enemies will be very comfortable. So, let's wait and see and decide. Let us first know what is the intention of Buthivikrama Kesari. We may get some definite news about the great Palyavatareya and Pani's Selvara by then. Till then, be patient. What? Prime Minister Anuradhar said seemed appropriate for Kalantaka Kandar too. In that case, I will leave the matters to be addressed to the emperor from time to time. I will take care of the defence of the fort, said the little Pula Vetere and took leave of the first minister. From that time he came around the fort wall and made the necessary preparations for the defence of the fort. The fort should be prepared for a long siege. If Kajumbalar's forces try to break down the fort gate and jump over the wall, he should be ready to defeat the attempt and for this purpose he should keep loyal soldiers there. 
if the fort wall is weakened somewhere, it should be strengthened with paving stones. While Chinapula Vetare was concentrating on these arrangements, his mind was also thinking about the means of getting news from outside. Tanjore Fort has two secret tunnels. One led out of the great scavenger's mansion through the treasure dungeon. Some days no one can use this route. Because the flood of the north wind was crashing at the place where the way was supposed to open out. If that way is opened then the flood will enter the dungeon itself. Another tunnel started from within the palace of Prime Minister Anuradhar. But no one can go out or come in through it without the knowledge of the little thief. Where the route passed the fort wall was guarded by a small guard. On the night of the second jamet, the petty officer was planning to send his private men out through the tunnel. We should send men to Katapur and Padayare to get certain information about the great Palyavatarayar and Pani's Selvar. It was at the time when such Kalantakandar had decided that a warrior came rushing in and reported that two women on an elephant had arrived at the northern gate and that the elephant's keeper was calling out to open the door for them. Chinapalyavatare was greatly surprised when he found out that one of the women present was Vanathi. When Vanati's great-grandson comes with an army and lays siege around the fort, how dare the girl ask to be let inside the fort? At first, he deliberately intended to say, surely the door cannot be opened. By the time he reached the gate of the northern castle, his mind had changed. Would it be a shame to refuse to open the castle door for fear of a little girl? Is this not a drag on my heroism? Thought that. He was also curious to know why the girl wanted to come into the fort. He climbed to the top of the fort gate and looked. It was well known that there were only two women on the elephant besides the elephant. He also came to know that one of them was Vanati. At that time Paria Velar of Kajumbalar was talking with them. A part of that conversation fell into his ears. He learned that Paria Velar was asking Vanati not to enter the fort and Vanati refused and insisted on going inside. Thus, the idea of opening the door to heaven was confirmed. When Paria Velar went further, he saw the elephant standing on the edge of the moat after taking a few steps. The elephant took the horn and blew it and said as before, Open the castle door to the princess of Kajumbalar. Make way at once for Vanata Devi who brings news from the great Palyavetare to the little Palyavetare, and from the younger Brady to the emperor. He shouted. On hearing this, the doubt and hesitation in the mind of the small farmer disappeared. It is strange that the great predator sends messages to himself through Venati. There may be some trickery or trickery involved. If so, can't he find it? Can this little girl survive her deception? You can take care. A reply to the blaring of the elephant's horn was heard from the top floor of the fort gate, and the light of the torch was visible. The ends of the vines glowed in that light. Arrows were locked in bows that were bent and bowed and ready to go. A human figure was emerging among them. The gates of the castle will be thrown open to the princess of Kajumbalar. Anyone but the elephant and the people on the elephant who try to follow them will immediately go to Yamanyuleka. The human form roared in a voice like thunder. Hearing this, Bhuthivikramakesari and his men went a little further. The castle gates were opened. The bridge over the moat was lowered. As the elephant walked over the bridge, the bridge shook. Vanati got a little scared. But there was no danger. The elephant reached the bank of the ditch. Entered the fort through the open gates. A moment later the bridge was lifted again. The gates of the fort were also closed. Little Palyavatarayar's elephant came and stopped near the elephant that had climbed up the mountain. Princess! Come! Come! I'm so glad you've consented to be my guests without being stopped by their great father. Fear no harm to them here! Said the small gardener in a majestic voice. Sir! I have no such fear! I don't care if you put me in the dungeon after I have told you the news I came to tell you. Vanatha said.